Special recording, The Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you Silver? The town of Gunsmoke, located near the eastern edge of the Arizona desert, was shrouded in darkness as Jack Barton, the 20-year-old son of the banker, moved softly out the back door of his father's home. He closed the door gently, then made his way to the stable behind the house. In the stable, he loaded supplies into a saddlebag, then proceeded to saddle his own black horse. And while he worked, he spoke in a low voice. I'm running away, Blackie. That's what I'm doing. But I have no choice. I've got to go away. To stay away. <laughs> quiet, Blackie, quiet. Dad's going to be mighty broken up. But not nearly as broken up as he'd be if I stayed here. To hang for murder. Easy now. The son of the banker rode all night, heading west across the arid desert. At daybreak, he halted the black horse and dismounted. Oh, Blackie, oh, oh. Gosh, Blackie, just about starved. We've covered a lot of ground since midnight. We've earned a little rest. Jack moved a few paces away from the horse. Then suddenly... Blackie, come back here! Blackie, ho, Blackie, ho, boy! But the horse kept going, running at a fast gait toward the town which Jack had left. Go on. I, I guess I'll have to travel on foot. Hungry, thirsty, with neither food nor water within many miles, the son of the banker continued west, on foot. The mid-afternoon sun was blistering hot as the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode east across a vast expanse of Arizona desert toward the town of Gunsmoke. For the past few minutes, they had been watching vultures flying low. Presently, they saw a motionless form lying on the sun-baked ground. Come on, Silver! Come on, Silver! Come on, A moment later, they dismounted at the side of a well-dressed man who seemed to be about 20 years old. Bring a canteen, Toto. Uh, well, the fellow's alive. Uh, me see him move. I water. Uh, here. here, water. I'll hold your head up. Now, take only a couple of swallows and wait before you drink any more. No, oh, thanks. Uh, are you injured? No. no. You're masked. Are you going to reject our help because of that? No. No more water, please. Of course. Now, drink slowly. Good. If you hadn't, I hadn't come out of died here. What's your name? Barton. Jack Barton. I suppose it's no use asking your name. If you wanted to be known, you, you wouldn't be masked. I have personal reasons for wearing a mask, but I'm not an outlaw. Oh, uh, where's your horse? I don't know. Probably back in Gunsmoke by this time. Is your home in Gunsmoke? Yes, uh, I left there last night. Oh? This morning I stopped to prepare some food. As soon as I dismounted, my horse bolted. 
Ran off with my canteen, saddlebags, everything I had. Have you been traveling on foot since then? Yes. Until I collapsed. Well, you need food as well as water. Oh, me get food from saddlebags. Good. Jack, we're going east. After you've eaten, we'll take you to gun smoke. My horse can carry double. No. No, I can't go back. Are you dodging the law? No, it's nothing like that. I, I just can't go back, that's all. I must keep going west. You can't travel on foot. I'll have to. Even though you could keep walking, it would take three days to reach water. It's certain death to travel on foot in this country. It doesn't matter. It matters to Toto and me. We can't leave a man to die on the desert. You'll have to. Because I'm not returning to Gunsmoke. Oh, are you afraid to go back? No. no I, it's just that I, I don't want to hurt my dad. How would he be hurt by your return? It, it's a long story. Oh, wait. I just remembered. I've heard of a man named Barton who owns a bank in Gunsmoke. Is he your father? I call him Dad. My real father died when I was a baby. Mr. Barton adopted me. He's the finest man I know. I'd rather die than hurt him. Tell me why you'd hurt him by going home. I don't see why you're interested. Jack, I don't want to hurt anyone, least of all a fine man like Banker Barton. But we can't leave you to die on the desert. We're going to take you to gun smoke, by force if necessary. No. If you know what that would mean to Dad, you... I'm... I'm trying to find out. I... All right, I'll tell you. Good. Yeah. Here, hold it. Put it beside the canteen, Toto. Uh-huh. Help yourself, Jack, while you tell us your story. Yeah, thanks. There, there's a man in Gunsmoke named Regan. Harv Regan. Owner of the gambling casino? Oh, yes. Is he a friend of yours? No. I'm sure Regan's a crook, but the law has never been able to prove it. I know he's a crook, and I can't prove it. What were you going to say about him? Well, a short time ago, one of his employees came into the bank. I worked there for Dad. Yes? The man came to me and said Regan wanted to talk about investments. Huh? He couldn't come to the bank during office hours because he worked all night and slept most of the day. He wanted me to call on him at the casino in the evening. Did you? Yes. I knew Regan had a lot of money to invest. Knew his account was worth going after. When I reached the casino, a man told me Regan was busy in his office. Hmm? He asked me to wait in a private room. It was a large room and eight or nine men were playing roulette. I didn't know then that all those men worked for Harv Regan. I found that out later. I stood watching the game when a man called Lefty Martin pushed in close beside and started to play. He lost several times in a row. Sixteen red, the winner. Oh, I lost again. It's too bad, Lefty. Oh, this hombre bumped my arm and made me put my chips on the wrong number. Oh, you mean me? Yes, you. Ah, take it easy, Lefty. That's Banker Barton's son. He's waiting to see Harv Regan. He's got no right to bump my arm. I didn't touch your arm. You're calling me a liar? How left? He take it easy. No one can call me a liar. I'll teach this young jump start. Oh, slap me, will you? No. Oh, you hit me. You want to fight, huh? Now hold on, Lefty. Let me go. I'll teach young Barton a lesson. Let go, a lesson. Let go, you defend himself. I'll help you, Barton. You keep out of it. Let go of my arm. Wait a minute. No. Well, you, you. Wait a minute now. Within a few seconds after Lefty slapped me and I struck back, it was a regular free-for-all. Regan's employees fought among themselves on all sides of me. And then I heard a gunshot. The fighting stopped. I saw Lefty Martin lying on the floor. And then I heard Harv Regan. He approached, saying... What's going on here? What was that shot, Mr. Regan? Barton and Lefty had a fight, and Lefty was shot. Barton must have shot him. I did not. I have no gun. Must have used a sleeve gun, then tossed it. Oh, no. Why? Yeah, had to. Any of the customers in the main hall hear the row? Well, I doubt it, boss. The walls and door are thick. I'll keep this quiet. Feel bad Lefty's hurt and do whatever's necessary. All right. Come on, give me a hand. Barton, you come into my office. Oh, Mr. Regan, Lefty started the fight. He slapped my face. Here we are, Jack. Step inside. Sit down and relax. I didn't shoot Lefty Martin. I've never used a gun in my life. Too bad it happened, Jack. A man in your position can't afford to be mixed up in a gambling house brawl. But I tell you, Mr. Regan, Lefty Martin is dead. What? Dead, huh? Yes, sir. We found this sleeve gun on the floor. It's been fired once. Leave the gun with me. What do we do about Lefty? Nothing until you hear from me. Wait in the other room. Yes, sir. This your gun, Jack? Uh, No, I never owned a gun. And I didn't shoot... Let me give you the straight facts. All the men in that private game are in my employ, and my men stick together. 
They'll all swear you used this gun and shot Lefty Martin. They can't do that. They can't get away with it. Yes, they can. Their evidence will hang you, and that would break your father's heart. No. I've always admired your father, Jack. For his sake, I don't want to see you face a murder trial. I'll not have to. Unless those men in the next room lie about who shot Lefty Martin. They stick together. They wouldn't let one of their pals hang. But they know someone has to hang for that shooting. So they'll frame you. Yeah, but I didn't do it. Well, as I see it, there's one way out for you. Well, what is it? We'll have to give the man who really did the shooting enough money to clear out of the country. If the boys know he's well fixed in Mexico, I can persuade them to tell the truth. Uh, how much money? About $2,000 should do it. 2000 I haven't that much money. You will have someday. You're the banker's heir. Oh, yes. Jack, for your father's sake, I'll loan you the money. I'll take your IOU. But it may be years Don't before... Don't worry I... about it. I'll take care of everything. Did you sign the IOU? Oh, yes. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. It seemed like the only way out of the trouble. But the next day, I learned that Lefty Martin wasn't dead. He wasn't even hurt. The whole performance was a scheme to get me to sign that IOU. Why did Regan want you in debt to him? Because he wanted me to help his gang rob the bank. Oh. He had it all planned. I was supposed to be working that night. I sometimes worked at night, especially at the end of the month. But on a certain night, I was to be working with a safe open when Regan and his men came in. I see. They were to leave me bound and gagged so it wouldn't appear that I'd helped in the robbery. And if you had refused to help Regan? He threatened to show Dad the IOU and say I'd lost the money gambling. What would your father have done about that? He'd have disowned me. You see, my real father gambled. He was killed in a fight over a card game, and he was Mr. Barton's best friend. So Dad, I mean Mr. Barton, hated gambling. I knew he disowned me. And worse than that, he'd be terribly hurt and disappointed in me. I understand. And that's why I ran away. Jack, without that IOU, Regan will have no hold on you. We must get it away from him. On the desert where the Lone Ranger and Tonto had saved his life, Jack Barton told of the circumstances which had forced him to leave his home. After hearing his story, the masked man decided that they should return to Gunsmoke and get the IOU Regan held. Oh, that can't be done. Do you know where he keeps it? Uh, no. Probably locked up in his office, maybe in the safe. How late is the gambling casino open? Till three in the morning. But Regan stays there. He lives in the same building. Yeah, we'll call on him. He's never unguarded. Three men live there with him. Lefty Martin and two others. And they're gunmen. Three gunmen, huh? Well, forewarned is forearmed. Well, what are you going to do? We'll start now and head toward gun smoke. Ready, Toto? Uh, be ready. I'm sure we can reach the woods near town by three o'clock in the morning. You're going with us, Jack. Oh, but I can't... If Regan can't get your aid in robbing the bank, he'll probably take the IOU to Barton and try to collect the money. So you'll not save your dad from grief by running away. Easy. Steady. Big fellow. Give me your hand. I'll help you mount behind my saddle. All right. But I don't see what you can do. You're going to try to get that IOU away from Regan. Yeah, but why? Why are you going to help me? There are lots of men who'd welcome the chance to fight in behalf of a good citizen like Banker Barton. Come on, Come on. During the long ride, Jack Barton, responding to questions, told the Lone Ranger all he knew about the gambling casino and Regan's living quarters in the same building. It was shortly after three o'clock in the morning when the masked man and Tonto drew rain in the dark woods near the town of Gunsmoke. Oh, 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 we're going to try to draw the guards away from Regan, and I'll speak to him alone. You got planned, Kimasabi? Yes, Toto. Jack, you said Regan spends about an hour in his office after the casino is closed for the night. Well, that's right. He balances the cash and takes care of the books. It's a little after three, so he's probably there right now. That office is in the rear of the building? Yes. Well, what we do, Kimasabi? We're right to the edge of the woods behind the casino. You want me to go with you? No, Jack. I want you to wait right here until we return. Give me your word that you'll stay here. I'll leave you untied. I'll give you my word. 
I'll stay until you return. Good. We'll see you later. Um, what we do when we get behind Casino? I'll tell you while we're on the way, Toto. You just stay down. Come on, A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto drew rein and dismounted in a clump of trees. They saw the back windows of the gambling casino, less than 50 yards away. The lighted window on the left is Regan's office. He must stop it. Oh. You take plenty of big risks. It's justified. Uh, Leaving their horses at ground hitch, the two men walked softly across the open area until they reached the lighted window. Keep down, Toto. I'll look through the window. You see Regan? Yes. He's seated at his desk, facing the other way. He's alone. Jack Sagard's always near. I know. Here goes. With a barrel of his gun, the Lone Ranger smashed the window. What the... Hold it, Regan. You're covered. Mask? Yes. I'm here on business. I don't shoot. My hands are up. If you don't want me to shoot, move carefully. Come over here and open this window. Very well. We've met before, Regan. What? I turned you over to the law in Texas when you were a stage robber. You, the Lone Ranger? Right. Now step back to your desk while I climb to the window. Why are you here? What do you want? I did my stretch in jail. I'm clear with the law. I came for an IOU signed by Jack Barton. Oh. You're dead, huh? Yes. Where is it? <laughs> I'm glad you came here. Very glad. I've often hoped the day would come when I could pay you for sending me to prison. Where is the I.O.U.? You're not going to get it. In fact, you're not going to leave this room alive. No? Several men have come here with the intention of robbing me. And they've all fallen into the same trap. I see no trap. No? Well, right now you're covered by three guns held by men behind the walls. Look closely and you'll see the loopholes. There's one beneath that picture. There's another over there. Lefty, is he covered? Yeah, boss. We're watching him. You see? At a word from me, you'll be a dead man. Regan, not knowing that the Lone Ranger had anticipated the trap, smiled confidently. Tonto, outside the window, took careful aim at the single lamp that lighted the room. Have you anything to say before I tell my men to... Hey! At the instant Toto fired, the Lone Ranger dashed across the office and opened a door. Get him! The shots from the concealed gunman were too late. The masked man ran through the private gambling room, then through a door to the area behind the building. Come on, Toto! The two men were over halfway to the grove of trees by the time Regan's gunman reached the door and opened fire. We have more of a start than I thought we'd have. Them not hit us. Night, too dark. In another moment, the Lone Ranger and Toto reached their horses in the shelter of the trees. You know the plan. Uh, me know. Toto leaped to his saddle, but the Lone Ranger remained unmounted. He handed Silver's reins to the Indian. Here you are. Me lead him. Come on, Silver. Come on. Both horses raced away, but the masked man stayed behind. He crouched low, concealing himself in underbrush, and waited. <laughs> Meanwhile, Regan's face livid with rage as he spoke to his gunman. That was the Lone Ranger. I want him killed. But he and his Indian pal had horses hidden among the trees, boy. You heard him riding away. Go to the stable next door and get horses. Go after them. That Lone Ranger knows about the Barton I.O.U. If I don't get him, he'll make trouble. All right, boss. <laughs> Regan went with the gunman to the stable. While three horses were being saddled, he gave voice to his hatred of the masked man who had sent him to prison. And I'll pay a thousand dollars if you bring him back. Dang. Hey, see? That's worth no laughing. We're ready. Let's go. Come on. Get up there. Oh. Regan watched his men ride out the back door of the stable and race toward the woods. Then he returned to the casino. In the main room, now empty, he helped himself to a drink. After lingering for several minutes, he went into his office. As he opened the door, he remembered that the lamp had been smashed by a bullet. 
He struck a match. And as he held it to the wick of an unbroken lamp, he observed with surprise that the wooden shutter had been closed on the broken window. I thought that shutter was open. Then, from a corner of the room, he heard a voice. You're covered. You! Yes, I returned as soon as your man rode past me in the woods. Well, but... Keep your hands up. Well, I see if you carry a sneak gun. Uh, uh, oh. Hmm. Unarmed, huh? Yes. Yes, I'm unarmed. You, you can't shoot a helpless man. I have no intention of shooting you, Regan. But unless I get a certain I.O.U., I'm going to make you beg for a bullet to end your misery. Just to show you what I mean. <laughs> That's just the beginning. Stand up. Come on, stand up. Wait. Listen, I... We're alone now, Regan. No one to save you from this. No. Get off the floor. No, no, don't slap me again. Slapping's the least painful. But if you say so, I'll use my fists. Come on, get up. Let it go, please. Don't pay you. I told you what I want. All right, I'll give you that I.O.U. Where is it? In the safe. That safe right there. Then open the safe. But don't try any tricks. After more than two hours of riding, the three gunmen finally gave up the search for the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Tired and disheartened, they returned their horses to the stable. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, the boss is going to be mighty sore at us not planning that mass, man. Yeah. It's getting daylight. You think he'll still be up and waiting for us? I'm sure he will. You didn't worry about reading hey, him. Uh, there he is, the masked man. You're covered here in the stable. Why? You... What are you doing here? Waiting for you. Otto and the sheriff are with me. All right, right, boys. You're all heading for jail. Sheriff. Now, don't savvy. Take their guns, Otto. Uh, me get them. The masked man persuaded Regan to open his safe. Do you know what he found there? But those papers Regan made a sign. Yeah. Telling all about your past crimes. You got those? Sure did. Here's handcuffs for you. After leading you men on a wild goose chase, Toto returned with my horse. I sent him to get the sheriff. I was sure surprised when I saw those papers. Regan made us sign them. Yeah, I know about that. He had to have a hold over you so as he'd know that you wouldn't double cross him. I knew those papers would make trouble. And we have evidence to go with him. You crooks are due for a long stay in prison. Well, Regan's going with us. I can tell plenty about him. So can I. Me too. He's in jail right now on the strength of some stolen jewelry we found in his safe. Things that were stolen from the mayor's home. When we finish talking, he'll be there for keeps. Otto, while you help the sheriff take these men to jail, I'll go and tell Jack Barton his troubles are over. I'll watch him burn a slip of paper and send him home to his dad. Adios. Adios, mister. Hey, how did Jack Barton get that masked man to help him? I don't know, Lefty. But I reckon that any deserving man has a friend in the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.